Brian with Grand Roofing bringing you a video on how to track down or some things to look for for trying to find out where a leak might be originating from on the roof. We're gonna walk inside real quick and there's a leak inside the foyer area up here. We'll pause the video, walk in there, show you the damage and starting point of what I look for and how to find the problem. So let's resume right back inside. So just coming in the front right there and we go up to this upper area, you can see a staining spot right there. So what I just did just a minute ago off camera is we're trying to get a general idea of where this is. As far as an attic access, I was able to get into one, just look up in. I did get some pictures, so I'll try to edit them up on the screen here in a minute. But looking towards the south from the entrance is where this is, is kind of a cathedral area. And I'll plug some pictures up on the screen, try to talk through this. So we want to find out what slope this is on in the east, the west, or if it's by a uh, dormer, return, flashing, anything like that. By the way, also, first off, I want to make sure there's no obvious wind damage or missing shingles. So I'll edit those photos up here. We'll go up side roof. Well, first off, let me see that side window. We're going to walk over there real quick because notice it's just a few feet in, straight up. And there's the spot. We're also going to come over here real quick. Notice the spot was right here, looking out. It is just off the left of my ladder right there. So let's go up onto the roof and see what we can see. All right, so back out here, I don't see any obvious damage. Those are a few things you're gonna look for that could just be a definite right there. Let's go up and walk around and see what we can see here. By the way, as always, if you don't have a ladder standoff, check it out use them they're amazing they do keep your ladder secure helps keep it from kicking out down below you and protects the gutter so nothing is behind them all right this is a little pitchy so you got the cougar paws on to get up here it's a 10 12 it's not bad but you want to be cautious if you're not familiar with cougar paws they're little foam replaceable pads that grip the shingles so starting here we want to find out where that window is we'll go over there and look where the window is i believe it's further back i think i already found the issue you're going to check for various things as far as your nail placement and your stagger pattern, your book, your offset, whatever you want to call it. Make sure your flashing is dumping out onto a shingle or a headlap of a shingle with no nails, rusted nail holes, keyways, anything in that area. That is good. You can see the lapping of the step flash is pretty good. Another one, ice and water, shingle under, dormer side that's lower. This is a close cut valley. Everything here looks to be good. Looked around, didn't see anything. But we wanna find out how far back we are and what slope we're on. Careful where you put your hands. I was up here a minute ago and put my hand right in that. It wasn't too pleasing. Let's try to do this without dropping my phone and getting some bird dookie on me. So looking over the edge, there's the window down there. Now I'm on a wide angle right now, so it was going to be a few feet to the right or to the east of that window. So if you come up to where I'm at, real close to where I am, maybe a little bit more right, which is about right where this dormer is I'm sitting at. So just following this dormer over and looking out towards the south, you got some items here. We're going to check this, but we're north of the ladder. So I'm going to roll this all out, but we're going to look at it since we're right here. Here's flashing, it is extended a little bit. There's a second piece that goes up higher. This is caulked. The shingle goes up under this. So if anything were up here running down, it's gonna run down onto a shingle. Then the shingles on top of this part start. Everything here looks good. A quick note to point out, if your ridge cap is pretty flat, that is a little concerning. I've seen them way worse than this. It can pool right here in this area. Let me get away from this pile. Of leftover bird food so if you get these dips here and they're pretty flat this isn't bad but I've seen them worse if it has a pit it's not gonna jump the humps it'll gather and there's not a lot of rain runoff but what little does could trickle in under this and eventually drop right off in but again I'll try to put those photos up there and where I believe this is is actually I'm going off memory now I mean I obviously I know this is east of this center ridge line but that little uh, cathedral ceiling inside there is right in this area where it looked to be dripping down. I did not go in the attic. I just looked up because it was really tight and got some photos of it. So as of right now, I'm going to rule all this out. We're going to look at this right down here. And I've talked about different things when it comes to 
roof overs and needing to tuck under. This is definitely tucked under, but it's probably tucked under too far. If you're gonna do this, you wanna make sure they're secured, but in other videos I also clearly said you wanna make sure that you don't want your nails near the outside or the bottom, anywhere along the perimeter of this. Because what could happen is water wick up under, not so much in this because it is a bit steeper, but you definitely have to worry about the water running down the side. Doesn't take much to get into this right here. And that is what I believe the problem is. It is completely loose. The nail is way too close to the outer edge. Even though they sealed this, the biggest issue is, is over time, water coming down here, getting on that shank. Now that's just a standard electro-coated uh, galvanized nail. It's not like solid, it's still ferrous. There's iron in there. So as soon as the coating wears out, it will start rusting. It's showing a little bit of sign. And there's a hole there. That is not good. You would notice more of a leak if this were down lower because you have more area for water to gather on the roof and work its way down. The lower you go, the more rain runoff hits it. The more it gathers, the more it can go in. This is in the top three feet, so it's not bad, but it is enough nevertheless to get in. That should not happen. I imagine when they installed this, it was pinned down pretty tight. It's just getting loose. Same thing on this other side. So yes, you want them tucked. I personally probably would have tucked this one and this one, brought this one over the top. I would have made sure there's ice and water under, or over, or seal it, whichever the case may be. But most importantly, pull these nails or screws in and up a little bit. Got them up in this area. You don't want wind-driven rain getting in them. You don't want them loose. Some people say screws, yes, screws are obviously gonna be better, I agree, because they've got threads gripping into the wood as opposed to just a shank that could pop out. But nevertheless, you don't want them on the edge. Just to look and see if this lines up with the location. So there's my ladder, and I'll try to put some more photos up on the screen where I was looking out, and it looked to be just slightly off to the left of my ladder, or south side, about where I'm at here. And if you look out over this way, just over the bottom edge, right where that window was. So this is in the area for sure. Again, you're also gonna watch these. I did go through, everything is all offset. The nails are in pretty good locations. And just because there is another one of those little electric uh, solar power fans right over here, another note, try not to walk directly on the ridge, especially if you have ridge vent, ridge cap, because you can push it down and break your nails. So just a tip on that. So the difference between this one is it is tucked but from the very bottom up, it's all lapped over. So those nails are not exposed. It's stuck down. So it tells me that they did seal under it. It's really stuck down. I don't want to lift them up because you don't want water running off. Partially what these little ribs and uh, the impression when they hot mold inject this is one, to make it more rigid, but two, more importantly, they have them going up and it, well, we'll go back to that and look at it, to have a channel for any water running down, splitting over the backside will no longer run out further. The theory is it hits that and is not gonna jump over it. So most of these do have a top and a bottom. Most power fans do, so be aware of that. There is a certain orientation for it. Go back and look at this. I can point out the ribs. It goes up. So water coming down off of this, splitting around the back, getting diverted, it's not gonna typically jump this rib. And there's a second for a fail safe, is also the rigidity of the plastic. Wrong spot for this. This is kind of fancy though. They're on, they're running. While we're at it looking at nail placement, let's look at the left side, good side first. Because this vent was installed and it broke with a keyway right here, there's probably a nail right in that spot. And it appears that it was sealed at one time, which it's all stuck up on the top of the shingle now, the bottom of the shingle, but above it, you can see where the impression was. So they did have it sealed and it's slightly left. So if you have these, you might you wanna make sure you take a precaution if you're an installer or a do-it-yourselfer that you offset them. You don't hesitate to cut this back. You gotta watch this keyway here. Cut this back over here. Make sure there's no nails in that spot and then put a full tab in to the point over here, leaving a small channel for the water to run off. But you don't want these right over your flange edge or over nails. So what we're gonna do to address this after I'm done with the video, pop this up a little bit we're going to shove a piece of flashing 
under this shingle on top of this under this one because it's loose and I can get under there to cover the hole then we're going to take a thin bead of sealer GSL 4500 black in about a half inch to an inch under from about this point down same on the other side we're not going to put a channel clear across the bottom because I don't want if any condensation or water gets in there it's trapped at that point I want it to flow out but we don't want it coming in from the side. Wherever that line is coming down, we're gonna move a screw or nail in and up above higher than that to pin this down. And then it'll seal this off. And then the flashing is a safeguard from the holes that are now punctured through these bottom edges. So that one's loose too, same thing. So as I said, those do over time rust out. And that's another good point to point out. I've done videos about nails and keyways over time. This is a Tamco. Tamco never seals down. Not a fan of Tamco. If you had a nail in that area, you can see the dirty water trail. Over time, it leaks. A lot of guys say, well, it doesn't leak. I do that all the time. I've even had guys even go so far as the seal strip that's here. They say, oh, that's to seal the nail. No, what that seal strip is to do is when your nail is pinning that shingle down and it's secured to the roof, it gets hot on a sunny day and melts and sticks the shingle down to it. Those seal strips are not intended to seal nails whatsoever. True story. I actually was working on a crew in the past and I had this guy, not gonna name him. By the way, I'm wearing the Lucky Shamrock today. Um, I'll at least say his first name, his name was Mike. He's like, hey bro, hey, this is what you do. That nail's good, it's supposed to be there. And he takes his knife blade and he pokes some of the black tar off of a shingle. Oh shit, true story. And dabs it on the thing and taps it, spits on his finger and pushes it out. He's like, that's what it's supposed to be like. No, it's not. If you have guys like that, run from them. Anyway, we're going long, 12 minutes. If you like the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, I'd greatly appreciate it. Check out the links in the description down below. Consider subscribing if you like the content so you don't miss the next upcoming video when I put it out there for you guys. Until next time, be safe, and we'll see you then.